This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter video professional here. In the Pittsburgh area, working with a lot of great uh, independent promotions, and uh, this is the show where we talk with a lot of people in and around independent professional wrestling and have a lot of great conversations. You can check out all of our past stuff and everything coming up. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page, and of course, all the links and everything over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line to goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. With questions for anybody that we have announced coming up, or if you have any suggestions on anybody we should be talking to in the future. And as always, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here in the new studio. Uh, so uh, with me this week, I, I, I love, uh, again, uh, women wrestlers on the on the show and getting their perspective on everything. Laura Loveless is joining us here in the studio today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, so, uh, and, 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 you know, somebody that I've seen around uh, from, you know, we're just talking about Ring of Honor shows and your experiences off air here. Maybe we can touch on that a little bit later too. Uh, but of course with RWA, and, and I know you've done some, some other things around the area. Uh, but first, you know, little get to know you question. What is your first kind of memory of professional wrestling? Um, so when I was a wee small kid, I'd say like back in the early nineties, um, this is terrible to say. We had one of those black boxes that got us all the illegal paper. Oh no, for free. <laughs> you're, you're breaking the law. Breaking I the was, law. but so we'd always like, uh, my family would stay up late to watch, uh, the pay-per-views mm -hmm. and we would always watch, you know, raw and everything else. And, um, I always dug like seeing like Alondra Blaze and, you know, Bull Meccano and stuff like that. And then I like it kind of put in this idea in my head like, wow, women, women can really, you know, if they could fight and they could be heroes and they could battle. That's really cool. And then, of course, I'd get into fights with my cousins and see which wrestling move we could, you know, cripple each other with. Mm -hmm. And um, that was my earliest memory of wrestling was just watching the pay-per-views as a kid, um, all of them. And then, of course, trying out the moves, which... Sometimes had a great effect, and sometimes did not. So awesome. So, so you you were pretty much latched on the wrestling all through your childhood, right? Yeah, I dropped off though when I like hit later high school and college because I don't know something about the product didn't like. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really relate to it as much. I don't know if it was just what was out there at that point in time, and just I what I wasn't being exposed to. Mm -hmm. And then after college, um, I was dating a guy at the time that was really into it like super into it and i'm like okay well i'll take you to the royal rumble so i took him to the rumble that was here a couple of years ago and i had been watching he had just walls upon walls the dvds like the bret hart story all the stuff that you could order from you know the wwe uh website and i started watching all of this and i'm looking at all of this i'm like why am i not trying to do this I work out every day. I like to be active. There's something inside of me, you know, that's, you know, a burning passion for something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, why not? So, so that was kind of your transformation then into like, hey, I can do this, right? Yeah, I was really adamant about it, actually. I was more adamant about it than I probably should have been. <laughs> um, you know, and then I started looking for wrestling schools in the area and I found two, mm -hmm. surprisingly enough. Um, there was PWX. And then there was IWC. Uh, I tried out actually for IWC first. Oh. I did. Um, they based, like, I think I did fine. It was actually the time point in time where DJZ was still there. And they said I did fine, but that they were already in the middle of their classes. And I would have to wait, I guess, for the next quarter and try out again. It's like, okay. And then I kept um, getting messages from PWX at that point in time, like, well, why don't you come to our school? Come out and try out. We could still start you. I'm like, all right. I'm already $100 in the hole for the tryout. <laughs> why not? They passed me. It was fine uh, for their physical fitness test. And I'm like, all right, do you want to start classes in two weeks? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of it. 
and that's how I met Brandon Kay. And um, ooh, that was tough because I was starting between their classes too, so mm -hmm. I had a lot of catching up to do. But yeah, I was very adamant about going. I liked going. I liked learning things. Uh, testing myself athletically and conditioning your body was definitely new for me. Mm -hmm. um, Chris was there at that point in time too. And he was very incredulous uh, about Larusso. Yeah, Chris Larusso. He gave me my oh my god. He he was such a jerk. Like during my fitness test, like we're running around the building, and he's like, "So why do you want to do this?" She's like, "Whoa, dude, calm down." And I was like, "Because I really want to test myself, and I think it's a really awesome platform to, for girls, you know, to really explore being, you know, this kind of warrior. You know, we don't get a lot of opportunities like that." Mm -hmm. I think it'd be great to, you know, showcase really what women are capable of doing. He's like, okay, don't ever date a wrestler. It's just like, dude, I, I'm doing my test here. I don't know where that came from. I already have a boyfriend right now. Thanks. I'm good. Like, what, what, what the hell? So I'm like, all right, awesome. I won't date a wrestler. Cool. Uh, and he's like, well, I hope this isn't like something to pick up and then just drop off. And I'm like, geez, no, it's not just chill out. And so I passed my little run test and I, they made me do a bunch of like squats and sit ups and push ups. And I did those and he's like, all right, I guess she's okay. I'm like, I don't know if I could swear on the show. Can I? Yes. Oh, good. I was like, I was thinking at the back of my head, like after I shook his hand and I, I like got through the test and everything and everybody else was fine. They were happy. Like, all right, we got a girl. I'm like, great, cool great to be here he's like he, he like gave me one like he was shaking hands with a cat mm. like yeah great all right well see you in two weeks and I, I was walking out of there and the guy i was dating at the time was like well how'd it go I'm like that was fine but that one guy was a real asshole <laughs> and you know the next two weeks he warmed up you mm. know and he was just like he was cool um he was very much about, you know, pushing me further, and so was Brandon, and the body conditioning was not easy, especially taking, like, I, I don't know if any other girls have shared this with you, but um, taking those tackles, especially in this region, mm. man, does that take some getting used to. So that was probably the hardest part about the body conditioning. The bumps weren't bad at and all. And for those on the audio, the the upper... Uh, the chesticle ch region. Chesticle, <laughs> chesticle region, yes. Yeah. Uh, that was tough. That That took some time but nah, it was after that once you get past it like and started actually like learning moves like i i just didn't want to stop mm -hmm. yeah awesome yeah. awesome so so uh how did you uh transition into your first match and everything was laura love is kind of the first idea for your character or i wanted to be laura loveless because apparently okay they put me on the show because i cut this promo as an as an hr representative of pwx okay and you could only imagine how much fun that would be you know, for an HR person in a wrestling company. And they really liked it. Like, well, we want you to manage first. It, but I'm like, all right, cool. That'd be great. I can, like, tell wrestlers, like, okay, that's bad touch. Don't do that. Um, no, you, you can't do that. That's, oh, you can't say that word. That's going to offend all the culture of that people. You can't, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, God, three days before the show, when I was supposed to debut, they're like, okay, so we changed it. You're not going to be an HR director. I'm like, oh, all right. What do you guys want me to do? And they're just like, uh, you're going to be the head of the Ohio Athletic Commission. And I was just like, huh? In Pittsburgh? Yeah. Okay. Because I was representing the Ohio guys. Okay. And it was Joey Vengeance and Jimmy Shane at the time. Okay. And actually, went, uh, Graham Wellington. And um, I'm like, all right. What is that? do what is, what is the per what does an athletic commission person do oh just make it up on the spot you'll be fine i'm like oh okay so i just went out there in a pantsuit with a book and acted like a bitch okay and it worked so yeah so so it was a so it was more of a manager role at that point then yeah okay um, they wanted somebody to get behind the ohio guys and they wanted to start like a kind of like a faction okay and it was a lot of fun and it really helped me learn spots uh, and being a critical part of that, especially as a manager. And I remember the one time, oh, God, this was terrible. Like a spot got flubbed. It's just somebody missed their cue and it, it screwed up the finish. And we all went back into the room and like we're all looking at each other like just what, what, the, what the hell happened? And then the, uh, the guy at the back who was, you know, directing us is just like, 
What? What? God damn monkey's ass kind of bullshit's that? What the hell? You had one job. You had one job. And he wasn't saying this to me. He was saying it to somebody else. But we were just like, yeah, okay, well, get him next time. Never saw that kid again. <laughs> I think, no, nah, like, I think he came back years later, but we felt bad. It was just like, oh, geez. Oh, managers, man. Managers and refs, they ain't, they're not easy jobs to have. No. 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 Um, how did you transition from the manager to, to to actually getting in the ring then? Um, they were building me to start screwing around um, with Honey Badger. Mm. And I was supposed to be taunting her and stuff. And then finally, we had a match. We've been training together for a while at that point. And it's just like, well, let's just do this thing. Um, now Brandon, like, you know, went over our match and, you know, we threw some ideas out there. Um, obviously, she was baby face, but she was an angry... I don't know a badger. I don't know what what animal category that falls under. It was just like an animalistic, Sick. yeah. Face, she had like still, claws yeah, and the yeah. big coat and thing. Yeah. And I was just you know sort of like a snooty you know corporate bitch lady, and you know people really want to see an animal rip the person like that apart. So it mm. got heat. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think it was a good first little match for us. Um, people really popped for her. She really got over, and she bit me, which was huge. Because, yeah. And, you know, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, from there, I, I know we were talking a little bit about you're your getting out a little bit more. You're traveling a bit. I know I see you uh, listed a lot of times in the Ohio uh, regions, uh, promotions out there. And you say you're going south as well. Can you talk about a little bit of your travel and some of the, some of the highlights there? I think my first out-of-state ex- experience was, um, and, or nor- it was, um, I think it's mid championship wrestling now. Uh, they had to change the name because it used to be uh, NWA Midwest, mm-hmm. and yeah, then, um, then they just dropped a lot of those NWAs. Yeah, yeah, because Billy Corgan bought the licensing rights. Yeah, yeah. I love Smashing Pumpkins, but I guess he didn't. No, no, well, he didn't do. But um, he really loves wrestling, apparently. I would uh, love to work for Billy Corgan. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, he's been they're, there's a pretty good series, uh, 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 Ten Pounds of Gold that that uh, Dave Lagan has been direct, directing. Really? And um, I, I I check out it's on their the NWA's YouTube channel. So extra has nothing to do with interview plug there. So, but still, uh, but anyways, <laughs> so anyways, you found this promotion. <laughs> uh, I actually was a manager there for Chris when we went on a road trip there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun. Got a lot of heat, and the guy is like, "Hey, I really want to bring you back." Oh, okay, so that was a big deal. So there was, and PWX while I was a manager, they had an, enacted something called mayhem rules. You could basically do whatever you want; mm-hmm. like nothing was going to get you disqualified or thrown out of the match or whatever. So Chris had this match, um, the guy named Vince, and it was a good match. And my like my ending thing was oh, okay. You got to. Get the ref's attention so I, you know, can go through the finish. I'm like, oh, got it, whatever. Fine. I'm not an amateur, whatever. This is easy. So he, like, towards the end of it, we're doing this, and it's it's getting a lot of heat, and we're, you know, getting a lot of heat from beating up Vince, and I keep grabbing his leg and trying to trip him and everything. Finally, we go to the part where I have to get the ref's att- attention. Now, this is Midwest, like, NWA. They have very strict rules about, well, you can't, if you, you can get disqualified disqualified by throwing somebody over the top rope. They're still doing that. They were at that point. Wow. So what is the my... Old, oh, the, old, the old Crockett rules. Or yeah, kind of. Old Bill Watts rules. And I think this was like my third or fourth managing gig at that point, mm. And I was really way overconfident. What does my goofy ass do? I jump in the middle of the ring <laughs> to get the ref's attention. I'm just like, well, I got to get in there. Suddenly, Vince is like, what are you doing in here? And the ref was looking at me. He's just like... What the hell? I'm just no, stop! And he's just like, get out of the ring. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And I'm like, okay, I did my job. Chris grabs Vince, they, and they go home, and they're done. And we go to the back, and Vince just looks at me. He's like, what the hell was that all about? Why were you in the ring? And I just looked at him, and I looked at Chris. I'm just like, this no mayhem rules. And, like, Chris starts busting out laughing. I'm just like, I'm not allowed to do that? I didn't know. Mayhem rules, bro, right? No? No? Okay, I'm sorry. And then I figure, oh, my God, I'm going to get fired. They're never going to want to see me in Ohio ever again. They're going to know I'm an idiot. I'm done. So the promoter is, like, making a beeline for me after the match. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, 
no. And he's like, hey. I'm like, yeah, that was great. I've never seen that before. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, hey, can you come back and wrestle a match? You wrestle, right? I'm like, yeah. That's how I got my first gig there. They, they do something. They do things different in Ohio, Ohio I guess. I, 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 I feel like we see that all the time here. I don't know. Like, it was great because I got my first. I got my first on the road match there. Um, okay, that match was not so great because I had botched a um, leg drop. It was okay look, looking for the most part, but I had caught myself on my arm because oh. I was going down, and I had essentially either sprained very badly or broken my wrist. And I still had about six or seven minutes of that match to fill. Oh, jeez. Yeah. With a broken wrist. Yeah. And it, it, just not good. Not good. And then finally at the end of it, um, I had to drive back for three and a half hours. I had to, uh, the, Josh Shields was with me. He was the guy, he's the kid with the curly hair and he's a ref. Mm -hmm. And I dropped him off first. He was nice enough to ride with me halfway. But I'm driving the car but every time I have to use my turn signal, I can't actually operate my hand. So I have to like do this. And it was, the pain kept me awake, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of sidelined me for a good month or so. Jeez. That sucks. Well, it, it taught me a lesson. Um, so, so, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, women's wrestling and this being a you know pretty cool platform for you. Um, from your experience, what do you think about the state of, uh, you know, women's wrestling as far as like a lot of these places that you're going these days? I'm really, really happy about it. Mm. Um, OCW actually even, uh, more recently with their women's tournament, it's, really uh, Ohio championship wrestling. It is. They have provided me with a lot of opportunity and I'm really appreciative of that. Mm. Um, especially with the women's tournament and then having a match, um, with angel dust, and then I took the title. It was really cool. She's also somebody um, I really enjoy working in the Ohio area. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have even a chance to work her, I definitely will because I learn a lot. Um, she's very patient. Um, she's very, like I would say, direct, but not in a mean way. She's just very matter of fact, which just – it helps take a lot of the stress away from having to try to like plan stuff out. She'll just let you know, that's not a good idea. Let's not do that because A, B, C, this is not – this is why it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And you don't – and you're like, you're not feel bad about it. You feel like, okay, no, I can definitely see the logic in that. Mm -hmm. But she's definitely, I would say, an awesome resource. Anybody coming up in this business, if they get a chance to wrestle her, just ask her a lot of questions. As long as, like, you know, she's in the mood for it. She might be, you know, double shotting, so it might not be a good time. And she's a lot. She's one of the, the, the I guess, local girls that I've seen. It feels like forever. Yeah. In, in the business. And, and always, you're always going to see a solid match out of her. She's in Shimmer now. Yeah. 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 And um, she's doing a lot of great stuff there. Um, they're actually, I believe she's doing that this weekend. I mm -hmm. did not get the chance to go down there because I'm doing, um, I'm actually heading out to Monster Factory on Friday with a load of car, with a car load of guys. And uh, then I have OCW on Saturday. So what are you, you know, other than Angel Dust, is there anybody else out there you've seen on the indies or seen on TV or anything that's kind of caught your attention that maybe you're drawing any inspiration from at this point or just you're kind of keeping an eye out for? Um... God, that's a hard question to ask because there really are just a lot of women out there now that are finally getting their due mm -hmm. and a spotlight on them that I feel are really phenomenal. Um, I actually started watching a lot of the Japanese matches before Asuka debuted at NXT. So I knew her as Kana. Mm -hmm. And I saw some of the work that she was doing. I was just kind of blown away at how just tough she was. And kind of looking at those matches, I was just like, I want to be that tough. I don't know if I can be, but I'm going to try. Um, the fact that she did a lot of intergender stuff when she could. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a really awesome match with one of my other favorite wrestlers, Tajiri. Um, spit. <laughs> so, and they had a, it was stellar. Everything that she, I have ever seen her done has always been stellar. And she's mm -hmm. always had, you know, a force behind her to want to win. So it's always awesome to see somebody who actually looks like it's, they're in a fight for their life. So I really appreciate people who can work like that. Um, Viper, uh, I like a lot. Um, I'm sorry, Piper. She was just recently in the... Oh, uh, Piper Nevin? Yeah. I, I really dig her. Mm -hmm. She's super agile. She has a lot of talent. She has a lot of charisma. Um, Tony Storm. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was great. She has charisma for days. She's just a lot of fun to watch. 
I can, I could, I don't know. I could spend like 80 minutes talking about people. <laughs> so, um, Tara, Val or Tyra Valkyrie. I like her a lot. I like a lot of the girls on Lucha mm -hmm. underground, especially. And, um, and actually the, one of the best intergender matches I've seen was Pentagon Dark versus the Black Lotus Triad. Holy crap. Which includes Kyrie Sane. Yes. Who's now the, you know, waterweight, I'm sorry, uh, uh, May Young Classic winner. Yes. And first of all, that guy can go. Holy mm -hmm. crap. In succession of those matches, too. I don't even know if, like, they did, like, cuts in between taping. Yeah. But well, I it, would imagine they had to do it all within the same day. I, I think it was it was probably, like, a straight-through thing. And it was, an, if I remember, it was an entire episode was basically his gauntlet match with the three members of the Lotus Tribe, right? Right. So. And every match was different. And that's what the thing, like, that really got me. The last match, I forget her name, but she was super tough. And she took that dive off the roof mm -hmm. and just landed perfectly on him. Like, I, good God. But I like him a lot. I like a lot of the Lucha Underground. I don't know what they're doing with that series anymore. But that was actually one of my favorite things to watch because, I don't know. I like that there's now a lot of different product to choose from. Mm -hmm. And... I think it gives a lot of inspiration of what you could do and w what you want to do. There's just not one, okay, well, you, you have to watch WWE because that's all there is. I, I always thought it was interesting because the women were believable, believably competitive. Yeah. In the entire scheme of things. Yeah. So. Um, and I know mm, the whole sexy star thing, but mm -hmm. I always enjoyed watching her on Lucha Underground and especially her with, you know, Valkyrie going at mm -hmm. it. I thought that was always a lot of fun to watch. Um, the one girl's name is Moon. Um, I don't know. Amber Moon? No, no, no. There's or... a, uh, she has like a snake gimmick. Oh, um, uh, Cobra Moon. Thank you. Yeah. I like her a lot too. She had some pretty, uh, good matches there, but their intergender stuff has always been very stellar. Mm -hmm. It never seems like, like you said, like the women are like, you know, on a crutch. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless they're going against like Sexy Star and Mil Martes, which yeah. is like, well, any guy, any guy against him, right? Like, it makes sense. It's not a different story, right? So awesome. So, what is the best and the worst thing uh, you feel about indie wrestling? Your experiences with indie wrestling so far? Ooh, um, there are like a couple of things I, I would like to see change, and I think they are changing for the better. The actual professionalism of it. I think is going in the right direction. Um, th there is almost like a weird kind of like, well, you have to know a friend to get into this club kind of deal. Mm -hmm. it, it's can be very cliquish. It could be very catty in a, that kind of sense. And I think if that, if you're going to be in this business that you have to treat it like a business, like I've seen a lot of companies that operate on a more business level that I appreciate it's less of a, you know, you're doing me a favor and more of, no, this is a job. This is what is expected. You know, you have to act professionally. I think I really appreciate that. And I think it gives credibility to the actual product. Um, so I see that as being an improvement. Um, sometimes, and I'm, I, I won't be shy about saying this, there is a little bit of sexism out there. What, what are you going to do? Um, we're getting away from that. Women, uh, People are taking women wrestlers a lot more seriously now, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but you run into it in weird ways. And I think that I'll give them a benefit of the doubt that they don't, I don't think they know that they're doing it, especially if they're from like an older generation. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just deal with it and, you know, you try to be polite about it. But I'm not the kind of person to hold my tongue about that stuff either. I'll be like, hey, just, you know don't say that or yeah, you know, no, you, you, you don't get a hug from me because I don't know you. Mm -hmm. I actually had a promoter do that once where he was just like, well, you, why aren't you going to hug me? I don't fucking know you. I'm not going to hug you. Who, who the hell are you? No, dude, back up. Uh, and I mean, like it, I was night. I'm like, um, do you ask the boys to do that? He's like, no, they're boys. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it either. <laughs> So, I mean, it's just like where to stay in your ground. Mm -hmm. um, 
I also had another promoter say, I, I was filling in for a person that canceled last minute. And uh, he was like, ah, oh, you can actually work. I'm like, yes, I can, sir. Thanks. He's like, yeah, you got a ni nicer ass than the other girl, too. I'm like, ah, oh, you could have just left it alone. <sighs> I'll let it go. It's fine. Oh, well, he's still going to run into that. No, uh, and I mean, yeah. he really, I don't really, I honestly don't think he meant anything malicious out of it. Right, right. So, and it, 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 the guy's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. So it's just, when you start traveling, you're just going to run into that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so where are, where are you uh, these days, uh, generally, uh, in case they find this interview here down the line here, what promotions are you uh, popping up at? Um, I'm definitely doing a lot of work in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, January and March, I believe, um, I got some stuff happening in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Uh, I might be heading back down to De Tennessee as well, um, more in the springtime. Yep. I am happy to say I got a match coming up, um, with Rise. So I, I w am curious to see where that's going to go. Um, I would like to have a little bit maybe of a home base here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Because Brandon Kay is an amazing teacher. I like working with students. It makes me feel at home. Mm -hmm. um, I still head over to Connellsville every Tuesday that I can to go train over there and say hey. And they have a beautiful ring. So it's always a lot of fun to go out there. It's like almost like a mini road trip. Um, kind of is. It's a little bit out there. It is. But I get to talk to his new students. And they have a little girl there. She's tiny. And she's super agile. Her name is Megan. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be wrestling in Doc Martens. I'm like, oh, you're going to kick my ass in those things unintentionally. But no, it's good to see the new crop of students. It's good to see like new blood and it's good to just see like, you know, your trainer doing well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, where can they find you online? Uh, uh, everywhere. I have a YouTube channel if anyone's interested in that. Uh, just search Laura Loveless Wrestling and you'll find it. Um, I got Instagram, uh, the one and only Laura Loveless. I think that's Twitter too. I think it's also your Facebook. Yeah. And I think your I think your Twitter is actually Laura underscore Loveless. Oh God, I'm glad you're here. That's what that's the extent of my research. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm out there if you want to find me. Um, but no, I'm heading out to New Jersey this Friday. I'm really excited to see Monster Factory. I'm being demanded that uh, Matt Connor say uh, have, uh, that I tell you that he says hello. Oh, hi Matt. How are you? Demanded. Okay. Yes. Lots of caps. <laughs> So, he's shouting at you. Yes, he's shouting at me in the chat room. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Laura Loveless, check her out on any of the shows. And, of course, uh, actually a few matches with uh, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling and RWA uh, over on IndieWrestling.us if you want to check those out. And uh, I believe on the cheap, too, since they're, they're uh, uh, for what they are. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, until next time, please, everybody, support Indie Wrestling, and especially women's wrestling. Thank you. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from the back down Act wow, steady sip and check This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com